What's up, Blender Savages? So today, we're going to make a squash and stretch animation. Just like the, uh, that Disney technique, where they have something smash down when it hits the ground, and then it bounces off and it stretches. All right. So that's what we got here. We're going to delete our cube and bring in a UV sphere and a plane. So there's our default cube, X key delete. Boom. Now bring in a UV sphere, shift A. Not to be confused with UV vodka, which tastes horrible, by the way. Mesh, UV sphere. There it is, cool, we got our sphere. That's gonna be our bouncing ball right there. All right, scale your plane up. Well, we gotta bring in a plane. We're gonna make it 15 times bigger. Shift A, mesh plane, S, 15, and there we go. We got a big giant plane there. And now let's see, we're gonna bring our ball up. So I'm gonna click on the sphere there and I'm gonna grab it, hit G to grab it, and by the Z uh, to grab it, then hit Z to grab it by the Z axis. Then I'm going to type in 7.5, so it goes up by 7.5 blender units, and then enter. A blender unit is one of these grid marks here in the background, one of, their square, one of those squares there. All right, so let me select my sphere there. G, Z, 7.5, enter. There we go. It's out of the my view here. Let me zoom out, spin the wheel. There we go. It's up there. Bam. All right. So now I'm going to go over to the animation workspace. So up here, these are our workspaces. This is our default one called Layout. I'm going to click on Animation. And you'll notice a change here. If I click it, there we go. So this right here, this is our 3D viewport window. That's uh, the same one we have right here. Down here we have the timeline panel. Just a little squeeze down, there we go. And if I go over here to animation, this is something similar to the timeline panel, but this one's called the dope sheet. And then over here on the left side, this is also a 3D viewport window, but this is a view of the camera. That's what this camera right here sees. So I can hit zero here on the camera view uh, in this window here, and I get the camera view. It's the same thing as over there. Uh, but I'm going to get out of that view. So I'm going to do the animate in here, and over here I'll get to see what the camera sees, and then it'll help me position the camera later. All right. So as you can tell, I basically just split up our windows there. I'm going to go down to the dope sheet, and I'm going to turn on the record button. It's called the auto key, automatic uh, keyframe insertion. So that's uh, this button right here. It's a little white circle there, auto key. I call it the record button. There we go. And by default in Blender, you get 250 frames. A frame is like a page in a flipbook animation or a cell in, in film, or a frame in film, sorry. I'm gonna cut this down to 70, 70 frames, short animation. The default speed is 24 frames per second. So this animation will be almost three seconds long. All right, so I brought that down. Make sure you're in frame one. I'm in frame one right there. You can change frames just by just clicking around here. And we gotta click up there on the numbers, not down here. This is not changing it, see? So you got to click where the numbers are located in this area here. You can also just drag it around. Let's go to one. And right here, this is current frame. So you can click in there as well and just type in a frame number. Now you can hit these arrows as well. Let's go to back to frame one. Uh, watch out for this one. This is how many frames you have. So you're starting at frame one and then at frame 70. How many frames you're using for your animation. So be aware of that. All right. So I'm going to keyframe that, uh, that the ball is up there. And I'm also going to go to the wireframe as well. All right. So I'm going to hit one for front view. See it from the front. If I hit one for front view, no, I can't see my plane. I know my plane is right there, but I can't see it because it's uh, paper thin. See? It's right there. So, so that I can see it, I'm going to go over to the wireframe right here. There we go. Now I can see it there. There's a little thin black line right there. Let me hit the A key to select all. There's my, uh, my plane down there at the bottom. There it is. Now, now it's uh, outlined there. All right. Let me select my ball here. And now I'm going to move it slightly. I'm going to move it up along the z-axis by half a blender unit, G, Z, 0.5, enter. That'll give me a keyframe over here. So a keyframe is like a key moment, a key event. So make sure your sphere is selected. You'll know it's selected because it has a yellow glow. If it does not, if it's not selected, just left click it and then it'll be selected. Oh, why, why aren't we selecting here? I can select it from here as well. Let me go to sphere. There we go. I don't know why I was doing that. That's really weird. All right, sphere. There we go. All right, so G, Z, 0.5, and there we go, the slide went up. And now I have keyframes in here. Let me open this up right here, object transform. See, so it changed the location for the X, Y, Z, uh, and then I inserted a keyframe for the rotation and the scale. We didn't really change those, but inserted frames for those as well. All right. And then I'm gonna go over to frame eight. So I'm gonna go over to, to the future, and I'll create another key event, and that's when the ball goes down. So I'm going to go over the forward and bring the 
the ball down. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get it right here. Click it. Boom, I got it on the first try. If you, can, if you didn't get it on the first try, just type in eight inside this one. Not those over there, but this one right here for current frame. You can try it there. Let me zoom in a bit. And I'm gonna pull this down. So it's gonna be G for grab. And instead of just hitting G for grab, because if I do this and it goes straight down, I'm in Z. And I'll bring it straight down right there. That way it snaps with the Z axis, which is up or down. And get it real close to it. Let me hit the decimal key on my number pad to zoom and center it. There we go. GZ, and I'll get it real close to it. I don't want to go through it. I can try to touch it, or I can get it real near, near to it. But we're going we're gonna to reformat it again some more later. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go to frame 10, and I'm going to squeeze it down and bring it down right there. All right, so frame 10. There we go, got frame 10 there. I'm going to hit S for scale, and then Z. So it only scales along the Z axis. Because if I hit S for scale, it'll proportionally scale the whole thing. See, I just hit S and I'm moving the mouse back and forth. I haven't clicked anything. I want to turn this tool off and put it back how it was. I'm going to right click. There we go. So right click, not left click. If you left click and you got something like this, you got a big giant ball, just hit Control Z to undo. There you go. So let me squeeze this down. So S, and then Z. That way it only scales along the Z axis. See, S, Z. Now I'm going to do this. And whatever looks like a good squeeze. That looks good for me. Left click there. Got a pancake there. It might be too much for me. There we go. And now I'm going to bring it down. G for grab and then Z key. And I'll bring it down so it touches the plane at the bottom. G, Z. And there we go. I don't want to go inside of it. Just real close to it. But I don't want to go past it because then in the, um, in the video here, you might see that the ball will go inside the plane. And we don't want to animate that. All right. If I can drag this back and forth here so I can test it out. See, let me zoom out. There we go. Squeeze. Bam. Bam. Maybe I want it to squeeze some more. I can still change that. I'm in frame 10. While I'm in frame 10, I can scale it down some more. S, Z. There we go. Then G, Z. Bring it down. And right there. Cool. All right. I like that better. So now I'm going to go over to frame 20. And I'm going to go up along the Z axis by six units. Because the first one, I went up by eight units. So first I reposition it by seven and a half. And then I went up by half a unit. So where's I went up by seven and a half? Right there, seven and a half. And then I went up by 0.5, so that puts it up at eight. Now I'm going to go up to six. If you bounce the ball after the first bounce from wherever you drop it from, it doesn't bounce higher than that. It starts to lose energy, so every bounce afterwards, it's, it's, a, it's a lot lower. It doesn't bounce as high. <clears throat> so i got to try to follow some of the laws of physics when animating. So we get a realistic appearance. Or else if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't look uh, believable. All right, GZ, six center. So that's to pull it up along the Z axis. Let me zoom out here. GZ, six center. There we go. Boom, shot it up, six blender units. So that's six of the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to stretch it up while it's over here in 20. Do we do that in 20? Yes, we do in 20. So I'm going to hit SZ. S, Z, pull it out, get an X shape, an oval shape there, in the other direction. There we go. Let me test this out. Hold, hold down and drag right here. There we go. Bam. All right. Now I'm going to go over to frame 20. I'm going to bring it down and then scale it down, smash it down. So here's a, there's a stretch right there going up. Then at 30, it's going to come back down, and we'll get another squash there. So I'm at 30 now. So I'm going to G, Z, bring it down. I'm going to go a little bit beyond it. Decimal key to zoom center. Now S, Z, I'll get the squash. There we go. G, Z, bring it down. There we go. So I'm test this out here. Let me zoom out. There we go. There you go. Maybe squash too much. It can just eyeball it. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. All right, so we got that. So I'm going to frame 40. I'm going to go up by four blender units and do the stretch. So 40 here. So you notice it's about every 10 frames. So up by four, G, Z, four, enter. I'm doing this at frame 40. There we go. S, Z, the stretch. There we go. Then I'm going to go to 50, bring it down, and smash it down. All right. 50, G, Z, bring it down. S, Z, smash it down. Let me zoom in center. So I went through the plane here. I don't want to do that. G, Z, bring it up right above the plane. Right there. Cool. And then guess where we're going? Another 10 frames over. I'm going to bring it up uh, 
by two blender units and then do a stretch there. Right, G, Z, two, enter. There we go. Oops, I didn't go over to frame 60. Let me undo that. There we go. So let me check this out. All right, frame 60 first. There we go. Cool. So always be aware of that. So watch out for that. And then 60, we're going up. All right. So now we're going to go about four blender units. G, Z, four, enter. S, Z, stretch. There we go. Let me zoom out from there. Check this out. Well, bouncing very aggressive. There we go. And it's 70. And the 70 is going to go down. And we'll just try to bring it back to the original shape where it stops the bouncing there. So frame 70. Uh, you can also use buttons here. This one here takes you to the very last frame. Sorry, the very first frame. Then this one will take you to the very last frame there. So if you have like a thousand frames, click on that one. It'll take you to frame 1000. All right, let me bring this down here. Oops, three for right view so I can see the plane there. GZ down. SZ, try to get the basic uh, shape there, the default shape. All right, decimal key zoom center. GZ. There we go. All right, let me zoom out from there. And I'm just going to hit the play button. It'll loop around. I'll get to see the animation. There we go. Cool. All right. So now I want to start coloring this. So I'm going to switch over to the uh, render viewport shader. So right now I have the wireframe on, so I can see through that like a wire. And you see the wire mesh, the, the mesh that, that makes up the object. So I'm going to click on this one right here. The one looks like a bubble. I go, these are the viewport shaders. So your first one is wireframe. And then your second one right here, the, the solid one's your default one. And then you got the material preview, gives you a preview of the materials you add on there. And then the rendered one gives you a preview of the final product. You can also activate those by hitting the Z key. You see in there right here as well. There's wireframe, solid, material preview, and rendered. There we go. Here's rendered. So now I can color it. I'm going to make this ball red. It's like any typical bouncing, uh, bouncing ball. It's going to be red. So I'm going to click right here on materials in the properties panel. So I select the materials. Now I have the materials menu here. I'm going to click on new to create a new material. And I'm going to name my material right here. Click in there, red. And I'm going to click inside base color here, the white bar to the right of base color. Not the little circle there, not the rivet, but right here. And I get a color wheel. Now I can go in here and make red. There you go. It's a nice red color. This is the value. I can go all the way up, make it brighter, or go all the way down, make it darker, or just make it black. There we go. With black right there. All right, cool. There you go. So my ball here still looks um, kind of blocky. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click it. So make sure it's selected. It has the yellow glow on it. Right click it, select Shade Smooth. It's going to smooth it out. See? Boom. Easy as that. It's a smooth ball now. There we go. Nice smooth ball. Aggressive bounce. All right. Shade Smooth. And now we know position the camera. So, so we can see over here on this side. Let me take this one over also to render view. So uh, this is a camera frame. So after you create your animation, you're only going to see what's inside this box here, not this darker area here. As you can see there, the ball is in, in, the, uh, in that frame very much, right? So you just see the when it hits the floor, you're going to see it when it's in the air. All right, so let's try to get the whole bounce animation. Let me zoom out from here and select my camera there. Cool. All right, I'm going to move over another frame over here somewhere. All right, you can see it there. I'm going to turn off this button right here. I'm already done doing the animation because if I start moving stuff around, it's going to animate that as well. So I don't want to animate the camera movements. So I'm going to turn that off. That way it doesn't record any other additional movements. Like if I move something, you don't want your, you don't want that anymore. All right, let me hit set for top view here. All right, I'm going to hit G for grab, pull the camera back. All right. Now I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to go over here. The camera's already selected. I'm going to G for grab. I'm going to go up right here. There we go. So I put the mouse on this side, and I hit G for grab. I just pulled the, the camera up. And I did it on this side. If I hit G for grab over here, it's going to go off to the side. Watch. Let me right click. So I put the mouse over here, then I hit G for grab. So I'm going to go about right there. All right. Let me go back to the first frame. So the first frame is where the ball is at the highest. Right. So we start at um, AQ at eight well, blender units above the floor here, above the pan, above the plane. So now I have to go back a little further more. Or I can try to rotate the camera so I can get part of that in there. Let's see there. All right. So it looks like I still have to go further back. G for grab back there. And then G for grab up here. So this might take a while. You know, try to freehand it here. There we go. Play button. Cool, so I got it there. Let me hit G for grab here, go over this way. Play button, see if I get the whole bounce in there. 
Go like that. And there's our light there. All right. So let's say you want to take your animation on the next level and you want it to um, change colors. You want the ball to change colors every time it touches the floor. So you can try this. Uh, you can have it playing or you can pause it. It's up to you. Uh, check this out. I'm going to select the ball here. All right, cool. I'm going to go over to materials. I already colored it red. Let me pause my animation. And just so I don't have to worry about all this other stuff, I'm going to go back to layout. I already positioned the camera. I got everything going there. So layout. Got the record button off. I'm at frame one right now. And let me go over to materials and go back to render view right here so I can get a preview of the uh, final product. There we go. Cool. Zero for camera view so the camera sees. So it starts out a little bit off frame. That's okay. It's still mainly in frame there. All right. So I'm at frame one. And here I have the base color is red, the color that I'm starting out with. I'm going to hover my mouse inside of it. I'm not even going to click inside of it. Just have your mouse inside of it right there. Hit the I key for enter keyframe. Boom. So I just keyframe that right now. So I just told Blender that I want the ball to be red at frame one. I can go over to frame 10. Let me go frame 10. And then I'm going to change the color of it right here. I'm going to click inside of it. I'm going to go with another color. I mean, go over here to blue. Or I'll try, I'll try, that's like a light blue. I'll try uh, this blue right here. All right. Now I'm going to click inside of it here again. Actually, I'm not going to click on it. I have my mouse over it. Uh, what you can do, you can right click. And then you can left click right there, insert, insert keyframe as well. You can do it that way too. And you can keyframe the, um, the color change right there. So it's called a color shift. So it's going to go from red to blue. See, there's red and it goes to purple. I'll try to get to the blue. There we go. Uh, but as you can see, that's right click. And then you select another thing there. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the I key every time. So I'm going to go to 20 now. All right. I'm going to go in here again, left click, go to a different color. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go green this time. Or I'll just go, yeah, I'll just go green there. There you go. I hit the I key while your mouse is inside of it. There you go. Keyframe that. And then go over to 30 where it hits the floor again. Actually, at 20, was I hitting the floor? I was not hitting the floor at 20. So I want to only change colors when I hit the floor. So let me undo that. I'm just going to hit Control Z. That was the last thing I did. All right. Let's see. Blue. Oh, I want to undo that some more. Control Z. There we go. So now it's blue there. Control Z until I undid that part. All right, so at 30, I hit the floor. There we go. 30, I'm at the floor. So now I'll try green. So I'll go over to green. There we go. Now I hit the I key here. There you go. Keyframed it. And it goes from blue. And I try to shift over to green. Oh, I didn't keyframe it. I didn't keyframe it because the color wheel was still up. So I'm going to go over to green there. There we go. Now I'll keyframe the green there. I key. There we go. Now it's there. There we go. So blue to green. Cool. And then at 50, I'll be back down. So it's every 20 frame or after that one. All right. So I'll go over to yellow. I'm clicking there. Go over to yellow. And get out of the color wheel. All right. And I'll put it back in there. I key. There you go. Keyframe that. There you go. Green and yellow. Boom. And I'm going to return it back to red at 70 right there. So I'm going to click here. And back down to red. And then I key there. And there we go. So play button. I go color shift, bam, bam. And then you can see there, try to transition into the other colors as well. Cool. All right, so then to render out your uh, animation, you can go up here and click on the output tab. This icon right here looks like it's um, spitting out something, sticking a tongue out at you. Looks like a printer. I think it's supposed to be a printer printing out a picture. Uh, you don't want to go with the uh, file format PNG, but you just want a quick video. It's going to click inside of PNG, change the AVI JPEG. Or else you get 200 pictures. Sorry, 70 pictures. We got 70 frames. You get a picture for every frame. You get a picture file for every frame. Uh, that's only some cases. But if you just want a quick animation, go with the AVI JPEG. It should render a lot faster. And click on the folder here. Then you tell it where you want to render out to, where you want to save uh, this project, the video file. Not the project itself, but the video file. So bouncing ball right here. Bouncing ball. Or squash and stretch, whatever you want to call it. Uh, desktop, that's cool with me. Accept. There we go. And then you hit control F12 or you go to render and then render animation. Uh, wait patiently. Uh, go for a walk. Come back later. Wait for it to render and process all that information into an animation for you. But um, that's basically it right there. See, there it is. And wait for this to go through and then you get your animation there. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, you can always leave a comment, show some support, subscribe, a like. Anything helps, share, hit the notification bell.
there's the wall already color shifting so this animation shouldn't take too long it tells you up here uh, you can try to estimate it so it's about 3.39 seconds of frame and then we're at this frame here nine so you can do that you can do the math so 3.3 times uh 70 and you get the seconds divide by 60 and you'll know how long it'll take you to render your animation so there it is guys thanks for watching have an awesome day